A lot of the low calorie muffin recipes I have had usually lack in the flavor department and don't have a true muffin texture. The high protein, low calorie muffins we make today are moist, flavorful, and are extremely quick and easy to make. If you happen to have two bowls and muffin liners, then you will be able to make these recipes. Let's get into it. We start this recipe by preheating our oven. By the time the muffins are ready to be baked, the oven should have just finished preheating, 350 degrees. Then get a medium-sized bowl on a scale and add 300 grams, 2% Greek yogurt. This 2% Greek yogurt is non-negotiable in my opinion, as the fat in the yogurt keeps our muffins from getting dry in the oven and improves overall texture for only three extra calories per muffin. Then add two eggs and 21 grams of a neutral oil. Here, I am using avocado oil. Again, the fat from the eggs and oil are going to add a ton to the finished muffin and the oil keeps the muffin softer than butter ever could. This is because butter is solid at room temperature while oil is liquid at pretty much any temperature these muffins could be stored. Taking any of the fat components out will significantly decrease your muffin eating experience and for 100 calories per muffin, there is no reason to. Finish off your wet ingredients with 4.2 grams vanilla extract, the zest of two medium lemons, along with the juice from those lemons. I use a microplane to zest them, and there goes my lemon. <laughs> For reference, I usually get about 80 grams of juice and four grams of zest from those two lemons. To get as much juice as possible out of your lemons, roll them on your work surface before you cut them. Just in case your lemons don't provide enough juice, and because we will need more juice later, I think it is a good idea to buy three of them. Now, getting this juice from freshly squeezed lemons versus that stuff in a plastic bottle along with the lemon zest will make a big difference in lemon flavor in the final product. And in low calorie baking, we need every advantage we can get. Fresher and higher quality ingredients will go a long way, which I have learned in the process of making my brownie recipe that will be coming out soon. I think high quality ingredients are so important that I am considering making an entirely separate video just about that. We will then add 100 grams of swerve or pure cane to the bowl and mix this thoroughly. Don't skimp on the mixing. Now, if you want a more prominent lemon flavor, I also suggest adding a gram or two of lemon extract. This will add a little bit more sourness to the muffin, and if you prefer your sweeter, you will need to add more sweetener to the mix. I found another 20 grams of swerve to be sufficient. Grab another bowl and add 90 grams of AP flour and 93 grams or three scoops of PE Science Gourmet Vanilla. Using a whey casein blend is of the utmost importance, but a close second is using the PE Science brand. In testing with different brands of whey casein, I would get different results even though everything else in the recipe was identical. You can most likely still get a good or even above average result from another brand, but if you use PE Science, your results will be superior not only because the protein is top quality, but it has been tested by me in my kitchen many times over. If you need to restock on protein, use code E4CM and you will get 10% off your order. This supports me more than I think you guys know and is immensely appreciated. Thank you. Now finish your dry ingredients off with three grams of salt, four grams of baking powder, and two grams of baking soda. Using a whisk, make sure this mixture is completely combined so that the baking powder and baking soda is dispersed evenly for a uniform rise. Then we will add our dry ingredients into our wet ingredients and mix using a whisk. We wanna mix until everything is just barely combined. This will ensure we don't have an overworked, chewy muffin. But on the flip side, we also want to make sure there are no protein slash flour bubbles that will end up uncooked in our muffins like this one here. To do so, I like to use a spatula and fold everything together three to four times, making sure to scrape the bottom and the sides of the bowl as well as across the top. I mean, I could honestly eat this as is and it would be absolutely delicious, but... Stay focused, Nick. Let's put our bowl on a scale, then grab 14 muffin liners and a sheet pan. I personally have been using these silicone liners since I don't have to worry about the muffins getting stuck to the liner and they are reusable. To be 100, they don't conduct heat as evenly, but in this sized baked good, I haven't found any noteworthy differences in doneness between the finished muffins. If you wanna check them out, I will link everything I use down in the description below. Now, these liners aren't necessary, but if using a metal muffin pan or another utensil, you will need to just bake time, which I will discuss later in this video. Using an ice cream scoop or large spoon, take out 59 grams for each muffin and place it into the liner. What I like to do is reset or tar the scale after I fill each liner to make sure I am doing my math correctly. This isn't going to be exact and you may have to adjust a gram or two per muffin, but this should make 14 perfectly sized muffins that won't flow over the top during baking. Once you have all 14 muffin liners filled up and ready to go, 
throw them in your preheated oven for 16 to 18 minutes. How long these take to fully cook is dependent on what vessel you use to bake them in, as well as your individual oven, because every oven is different. Now, if you bake them in a non-silicone pan, they will probably cook a little faster. How much faster? Well, it depends. Is it steel or metal? Oh, and is it carbon steel, aluminized steel, stainless steel? How thick is your steel? You see where I'm going with this? It is almost impossible to know without a little bit of trial and error. One thing I know for a fact is the toothpick test never lies. Normally, you want the toothpick to come out clean, but not for high protein baked goods. Trust me, I know from experience. <coughs> Oh my gosh. You will want to pull these muffins once the toothpick comes out with some muffin juice on it. If it looks like this, it's time to pull it. As a matter of fact, both myself and my girlfriend preferred all of our muffin flavors slightly underdone. It makes the top super creamy, ultra moist, and honestly, almost addicting. The muffins will still cook once they are out of the oven and pulling it a little early guarantees success, whereas pulling them even just a little late is something you can't come back from. This is what the middle of the muffin looks like when perfectly cooked versus slightly underdone. And for reference, this is the difference of about one minute in the oven. Yes just 60 seconds. So if you cook them 60 seconds longer than perfectly done, your muffin will be dry and you will be mother effing me in the comment section below. When you do pull your muffins, let them cool for about 15 minutes. While we are waiting for our muffins to bake, let's get our glaze ready. This glaze is three ingredients, powdered sugar, lemon juice, and butter. In a small bowl, add five grams of butter, throw that in the microwave in 10 second intervals until it is melted. Then add 110 grams of powdered sugar into a small bowl along with the zest of half a lemon, 35 grams of lemon juice, and finish with your melted butter and mix. Now I know using real sugar is atypical for the channel, but this is an instance where the amount of calories actually added to the muffin is minimal and the amount of extra flavor you get is maximal, so I highly recommend it. However, if you are really trying to watch your calories, you can use swerve powdered sugar and lemon juice and still utilize a glaze for your topping. Now get your muffins on a wire rack with parchment paper below them and using a spoon, add your glaze. You will notice most of your glaze just rolls off the muffins or is left over in the bowl and isn't used. Only about 10 to 15 calories worth of glaze actually sticks to your muffins, but I'm telling you right now is so unreal good that this muffin may just become your new favorite muffin of all time. To store these muffins, get a sealable container and lay a couple of paper towels down so they soak up moisture that the muffins will inevitably release. Then add your muffins and seal the top. Who are we kidding though? We both know you want to eat one of these while it's still warm like a hot and ready Krispy Kreme donut. So while you do that, let's move on to our second muffin. For this recipe, we need to start with bananas. <laughs> Very ripe bananas, like starting to turn black, stem cracking ripe bananas. Now you can use ripe or just overripe bananas as well, but the best flavor is going to come from essentially the oldest bananas possible. If you only have kind of ripe bananas on hand and you want to artificially ripen them, you can put them in the fridge. The next day your banana should be ready to go and is a whole lot better than waiting five to seven days. Now put your bowl on a scale and add 360 grams of your soft and squishy bananas. To break these down, use a fork and smash away. This will only take a minute or two, but since I have an immersion blender that breaks them down in seconds, I'll just use that. Now add two eggs, 10 grams of melted butter, and 11 grams of avocado oil. I know just a few minutes ago I said butter isn't the best option for muffins, but something like banana bread gets its flavor with the utilization of some butter while also using oil to keep it soft. That being said, we will get the best of both worlds to make for a top tier banana bread muffin. Finish off your wet ingredients with 4.2 grams of vanilla extract and 80 grams of brown sugar swerve. I find brown sugar swerve to be best and is also what is typically used in banana bread recipes, although if you only have granulated, that will work as well. Get a whisk and get it all mixed up. Time to get our dry ingredients together. In another bowl, add 85 grams of flour, 93 grams PE Science Snickerdoodle protein powder, 7 grams cinnamon, 3 grams of salt, 4 grams baking powder, and 2 grams baking soda. If you only have the multi-purpose PE Science but not the snickerdoodle, that will work as well. It is just a little less sweet and slightly less robust than overall banana bread flavor. You can adjust the sweetness to your taste accordingly. Get the dry ingredients completely mixed and add them into your wet ingredients. Whisk them until they just barely come together and using a spatula, fold them three to four times to ensure there are no dry pockets. Put your bowl on a scale and get your muffin liners, sheet pan, and ice cream scooper ready. Now scoop 58 grams of your mix into each liner. When finished, pop those in the oven 
and if you're mischievous like me, lick your bowl clean. These should take about 16 to 18 minutes to bake, but the toothpick test should look similar to the lemon glaze recipe depending on how done you would like them. When pulled, try to let them cool before eating one, and once completely cooled, store them. Honestly, I have simply just been putting these in a gallon bag and eating them whenever, but if you want them to keep their shape and or not get soggy, you can put them in an airtight container with a paper towel lined underneath it, similar to the lemon glaze recipe. Ironically, similar to them being underdone, both me and my girlfriend prefer the slightly more moist or soggy version in the plastic bag, so do whatever method you prefer. No matter how you store them, the muffins will be good for four to five days. And shout out to my girlfriend who came up with the concept of this recipe almost a year ago at this point and tested it about 15 to 20 times to get it perfected. To be honest, without her, I probably wouldn't be making this video right now, so show some love to her in the comments section below. On to our last but arguably best recipe. We will start this recipe, oddly enough, with another very ripe banana. Although this isn't a banana recipe, the banana itself will give this muffin better texture and the natural sugars will provide additional sweetness without adding any banana flavor to the finished product. Throw a bowl on your scale, weigh out 120 grams of banana, and since it is only one banana, I will mash this one with my fork. Then add 240 grams pure pumpkin puree, two eggs, 21 grams of avocado oil, 4.2 grams vanilla extract, 40 grams brown sugar swerve, and 40 grams granulated swerve. Grab a whisk and get it mixed together until it looks like this. Then grab your other bowl and add 90 grams AP flour, 93 grams PE Science pumpkin pie protein powder, and 3 grams pumpkin pie spice. If the pumpkin pie protein is no longer available since it is a seasonal item, I would substitute with 3 scoops of the multi-purpose protein. To make up for the lack of pumpkin flavor and sweetness provided by the pumpkin protein, I would then double the amount of pumpkin pie spice, which you could find at your local Walmart and an additional 20 grams of each sweetener. This makes it about 9 out of 10 as good as the original, which the original is a 9.6 out of 10 as is. Finish the dry ingredients by adding 7 grams cinnamon, 3 grams salt, 4 grams baking powder, and 2 grams baking soda. Whisk the ingredients together and add to your wet mixture. Now blend all of your dry ingredients together until just barely combined and use your spatula to fold in 3 to 4 times similar to the last two recipes. Grab 13 muffin liners, line them up on a sheet pan and fill each one with about 59 grams of batter. When finished, throw them in the oven for 16 to 18 minutes or until the toothpick test gives you the amount of doneness you prefer. Here are what mine looked like after 18 minutes versus 17. Take them out, let them cool off, and look how perfect these look after sitting for about an hour. Every one of these recipes is a 9 out of 10, and I would bet even the toughest critic wouldn't be able to tell that these are low-calorie and high protein. If you love muffins, you most likely love cookie dough, and I have a plethora of recipes which you can check out here. Until next time, deuces. I got some banana bread at work today, dude. Hell yeah.